I want to talk about preparing for the worst. Preparing for the worst. As we off top give the Holy Spirit honor the glory and definitely our praise and worship. You know, oftentimes you hear a lot of preachers always talk about planning for the good. People in general in life talk about planning for the good. And I know that title may throw some people off because all we hear about is, you know, plan this plan, plan for the good. But when you talk about planning for the worst, it kind of throws people off. Because there's nothing wrong with planning, you know. The Bible teaches us to plan. And it's a beautiful thing when you plan. But the Bible says that a, a person's heart plans his way. But the Most High Yahuwah orders our steps. And a lot of times what we plan, <laughs> it don't come out right. And if you want on the scripture I was just talking about was Proverbs 16, verse 9. We plan, but he orders our steps. And I was just having this conversation with my wife um, last night because I tell my wife all the time, I plan my mind for the worst. That throws a lot of people off. I plan my mindset for the worst that could happen in this life. I live every day like it's, like it's I plan like I'm going to live forever, but I live every day like it's my last one. We can never know when we're going to take our last breath. And I'm going to say it again. I, I plan like I'm going to live forever, and I know I'm but I live every day like it's my last one. And the old folks will see, expect the unexpected because in this life, you don't know what these trials and tribulations are going to be, whether it's financial, sickness. I mean, you just don't know. And that's when it shows, when you show your true faith in the Holy Spirit, your trust. When you when you um get to going through situations in your life, I've learned to trust in him. And I have a support system. What, what, what do you mean, JT? The Holy Spirit will put you around some praying warriors. The Holy Spirit removes people out of your life if you if you allow the Holy Spirit to work on you. The Holy Spirit will, will it's pruning season for a lot of people. You don't need this person, need that person. You don't need this family member. You don't need this co-worker. You don't need this church no more. You don't need this pastor no more. Somebody better catch this. There is a time and a season for everything under the heavens, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And when he surrounds you around that support system that you need, it's a beautiful thing. Because now you have people that will have your back versus the people that you used to be around that didn't have your back. So it's always best to have a support system. Okay? There is a scripture in Proverbs 21, verse 30. Uh, 20, uh, yeah, verse 20. Chapter 21, verse 31. Because it's teaching you to prepare for the worst. A lot of people don't catch this scripture. When you read the whole chapter, so awesome, but then it talks about a horse. You know, getting a horse ready. You can prepare us all you want. But when it's battle time, even with your preparation, the Bible is showing you it's the most tight against the victory. What, what you mean by that, JT? We can prepare all day and all day, every day. You can pr prepare for the worst, prepare for the best and the worst. But your trust is in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not fighting the battle. The Holy Spirit already showed us that the victory is won, even if it means death. The victory is won. Teach Holy Spirit. I try my best to lean into my own understanding. Now, the reason why I want to start this video off like this, because this is for you too, Diana Way, as you text me the other day. Around this time of year, so many people have already died. So many people are dying. 
So many people are laying in the hospital. So people need encouragement. People need support. People need love. People need to be prayed for. That's why I say I don't have a holiday spirit. I have the Holy Spirit. And last night, Brother Dana Way, I hooked up with my mom and the one sister, the one I told y'all to help me pray for. Um, Brother Hall, appreciate you praying too the other night. We um, went to visit her at the UT Southwestern last night. And uh, not going to lie to you, it's, it's it was hard to look at uh, because that's somebody real close to my family. Been best friends with my mom for yay high. Uh, me and her daughter is very close. Shayla, shout out to you. Shayla came last night. But to see your loved one uh, going in and uh, not really recognizing who you are, going in and now doing know who your own daughter is at times, losing so much weight. Uh, they, I think they say she got about four different cancers. Her bones is deteriorating. Uh, mine is just going in and out. You know, with, like like mom said last night, the higher they got you up on the floor, you know what time it is. They done pretty much said there ain't nothing else they can do. But one thing I love that my mom said last night, she told her one best friends that you have to be spiritually prepared. Spiritually prepared. Because one thing that bothered us last night, my mama JTH said, girl, how do you feel? She said, I'm ready to die. And then she said she didn't believe in God for a moment. She just said, yeah, yeah. And Mama JT said, well, we've been believing in God our whole life. She said, you can tell her conversation is just, she's had a very, very poor spirit. And as Mother JT prayed for her, I just sat there and just watched and and prayed in my in my mind. Um, because I know that's what my mom I already lost one of her other best friends not uh, a while back, um, Carl Jean, and and I know I told like I tell my mama, I get that off of her too. I lo I love the way she deals with death because I watched her deal with the death of her mom in a very special way, and she did all she could prepare her mom the best way she could. So my mama have a gift for that. She's a she's. She takes care of a 97-year-old woman. She's a gift for that. And she always prepare her mind for the worst, as she would say. And that's the way I live my life. I'm so grateful when I wake up in the morning. Hallelujah. Thank you. But but there are a lot of people that won't let go. They won't let go. And they won't accept. As I was talking to my big brother, Roger, uh, Roger Hill. Roger, Mama here, Mama Janice, you're talking about one of the greatest mothers you'll ever meet that lived this earth, man, that I've been knowing since I was a little boy. She had about four or five different castles, and her bones deteriorated. I love Roger's spirit because Roger told me, I asked him about his baby brother, Ernest. He said, man, don't come around. Don't nobody see him because his baby brother has not accepted the Holy Spirit bringing his mom home. He's not the only one like that. And as Roger, big brother, said, you have to accept it. When a lot of loved ones die, many people get angry at the most time. Not simply knowing that death is the way out of here. I know it don't sound good, but you got to view death as the way the Holy Spirit showed us. He said death, catch what he said though, for his saints, his children in the book of Psalms. He said death is precious in his eyes. We want to sit up and have a pity party. Why you take my mama? Why you take my daddy? Why, 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 why? If that person had their heart right, they're in better shape than you is living. That's the part a lot of people don't want to look at right here. Paradise. I ain't say everybody went to paradise. Some of these preachers be up in their line preaching the unsaved funeral and talking about they're in a better place and they're in the worst place. But you have to learn to accept 
his will. We're so quick to our prayer saying, and let your will be done. But when his will is being done, how many people got a problem with it? So I just wanted to talk to you for a moment to, to just remind us. You guys can also prepare for the worst. This is one thing my wife loves about me because she said, you don't never stress about stuff. You don't never, the Bible tells me don't worry. The Bible tells me don't even worry about tomorrow. Each day got enough trouble of its own in the book of Matthew. So why am I going to buy next week and next year? I'm just happy to be here. Today, the Holy Spirit have allowed me to see another blessed day. A lot of people say happy birthday. I say another blessed day. December the 20th. I'm blessed to be here. When I went through so much with my body, but look at me, I look good. I tell myself every day, boy, you're a handsome man. You look good. When they told me to make precious, I said, I'm always prepared for the worst. But I live every day like it's my last one. I plan to live forever. Somebody better catch that. Because when I die, I will live. I will have a new body, a glorified body, a spiritual body that's promised, that's on me. And I don't want to miss it. And none of us should want to miss it. Don't get so caught on this life that you don't think it could be, and be concerned about the afterlife. Because one day this heart going to stop beating. And I'm going to take my last breath. So I want to encourage y'all. All this going through, losing loved ones, I, I know it. it and I know it's not easy to deal with, but keep in mind, Yahweh is the best way. All of us should be working toward our goal, which is eternal life, salvation, in spite of what it looked like living right now. So with that being said, I love y'all, and y'all take care and have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. Shalom.